So on Sunday, August 22, 1982, they went to the Vancouver airport, rented that Cessna 150, and, full of excitement, flew east to Penticton, where they hung around all afternoon and then fooled people a bit when they flew north before turning around to head southeast into Montana. How did you prepare for landing on the lake, the two of you? Before we took off, we end up switching um, our clothes to so swim clothes. We distribute everything to two bags. And three hours later, they were flying on fumes as they descended in the near dark toward the shimmering surface of Little Bitter Root Lake. As you were coming in for a landing, you must have been pretty nervous. Sure, nobody practices to landing on water on a fixed wheel aircraft. He slowed to stall speed. He took off his seatbelt, figured his grip on the controls would hold him in place. Diane kept her seatbelt fastened, lap belt and shoulder harness. And then... When this wheels hit that, that the water, it was like hitting a cement wall. And suddenly you're in some cold water. Cold water, and I remember tasting blood. And so it was blood in my nose, blood in your mouth. Could you Lake see anything? Water. No, it was the outside's pitch black. Uh, it's worse even underneath the water, so I'm spinning around trying to orient myself. Once I stabilized and I came to the surface, I yelled out, you know, Diane, where are you? Are you okay? And then from there, she, she said, yeah, I just can't get my seatbelt off. She probably didn't say it quite so calmly. No, she was actually was fairly calm, I believe. Desperately, he said he tried to get to her, unaware that when the plane hit the water, as shown in this animation, it flipped. So he ended up behind the airplane. And when he struggled through the water to what he thought was the passenger door where Diane was, he was actually on the wrong side across the plane from where Diane was hanging upside down, trapped in her lap seat belt. By the time I got to the door and got to try to open it, and, and when it did open and the water started rushing in, the plane was almost completely underneath the water because of the broken up windshield and the side door windows. I'm laying halfway in the water, halfway on, on the wing, with my arm trying to open, hold the door open and trying to reach in to get Diane. And then all of a sudden the plane just sub submerges below the water. And that's how it ended. What was that like? It's horrifying. It was... Watch it go down there with her inside. It was 20 seconds before. We're the two most happiest people in the world. And, and my life was just torn to pieces at that moment. You know, we never... Never, ever anticipated something like this. What did you do right then when that plane went down? I was hoping somehow she would be able to get that seatbelt off. So I'm swimming around just to see if I can, uh, maybe she'll pop up somewhere that she got the seatbelt off and came up. But she did not. No, he said the only thing that floated up was that one duffel bag, the one containing his clothes and the $2,200 they'd saved for the trip a fact pointed to by many law officers as suspicious. They would say, why did he only get his clothes and the money uh, and let her clothes go sinking down to the bottom of the lake? Just random luck. Law officers will say there's no accident in life. Things are either on purpose or they don't happen. Yeah, well, you know, people always speculate, but it was just a random, uh, by chance. Afterwards, this became a problem for some of the people who were looking into the incident because the numbers of them would say, God, that was me. I would have done anything. I would have drowned if I had to. I would have got into that plane. I would have got her out of there. I would have saved her somehow, even if I died in the process. Why no. didn't you do that? Easy to do that when you stand on a couch with a cup of coffee, but not so easy when you're, you've got 15, 20 seconds and the plane is sinking in front of you and you can't open the door. When you do open the door, the plane's almost completely underwater. And people just don't visualize and picture what this was and how quickly this happened. What took over then, he said, was overwhelming, numbing shock. My limbs were starting to get numb, and, and I could barely do the paddling to, in order to stay afloat, so I ended up, I then take that one back, paddling docky style, and got to shore and spent the next few days in, in shock. <laughs> 